video on short-term operating assets, cash, and receivables, we're going to focus our attention on the allowance method, and actually one of the allowance methods in this video. Um, but we're talking about estimating the amount of accounts receivables that we're not going to collect. And GAAP approves of one of two methods, and they're both allowance methods. And the one we're going to be talking about in this um, video is percent of sales method. So again, this is one of the two allowance methods allowed by GAAP. This is going to create a contra um, account, contra asset called allowance for doubtful accounts or allowance for uncollectible accounts. And we're just going to jump right into an example on how this works. So during its first year of operations, Signature Lamp Company earned revenue of $350,000 on account. Industry experience suggests that bad debts will account or amount to 2% of revenues. At December 31st, accounts receivables totaled $40,000. The company uses the allowance method to account for uncollectibles. And so we want to journalize Signature's uncollectible account expense using the percent of sales method and show how accounts receivable would be reported on the balance sheet. Now the reason the allowance methods are approved by GAAP is because it actually um, allows you to record the estimated uncollectible account expense in the same period as you recorded the sales revenue. So it follows the matching principle. So the first thing we need to figure out here is, well, what is our bad debt? What are we assuming that we're not going to collect? So the bad debt would be $350,000 in earned revenues that were earned on account. That means we didn't receive them yet in cash. And we're assuming, because of past experience or industry experience, that 2% will not be collected. So that means about $7,000 we will never see. One thing, too, we need to keep in mind, because these two allowance methods that we're going to talk about, again, this is the percent of sales. The other method is called the aging schedule, and we'll get to that in a, in a, in a following video. But the percent of sales, they do act differently. The percent of sales method actually adds to the current balance in your allowance account. So that's very important for you to note because the aging schedule doesn't act that way. So the percent of sales method will add to your current balance in the allowance account. So it's going to increase that balance or decreasing it, but in most cases it's going to increase that balance. So let's look at this journal entry we're going to make for our bad debt expense of $7,000. So we have a bad debt expense here that we're going to debit and we're going to credit that allowance account. Remember the allowance account is a contra asset, so it increases with credits. And we're ne we need to book that expense to reduce our taxable income. So bad debt expense is getting debited for the 7000 and the allowance for bad debt or allowance for uncollectible accounts or allowance for doubtful accounts, whatever that account is called, you would credit that for $7,000. And then the way that would be represented or presented on the balance sheet you would have your total account receivables. Notice that balance didn't change. It's still $40,000. That's what we sold on account. And then we would have a line under that less your allowance account of $7,000, which is the current balance there because the percent of sales increased that balance. We have now net account receivables. Remember that word net is something's been taken out. In this case, what's been taken out of the account receivables account is those allowance for bad debt. Now this is one way you may see it presented on the balance sheet. Another way is simply just that bottom line. Net account receivables, $33,000. Okay, so if it's presented this way on the annual report, then you would have to go into the notes to the financial statements to find out what the actual balance and accounts receivables are, as well as the allowance account. Now what also I want you to pay close attention to or take note of is that no individual account at this point has been written off. We are just assuming that we're not going to collect $7,000 of our $350,000 of accounts receivables. We don't know any particular client or customer at this point that we're going to write off. So we haven't really pinpointed anyone yet. So what happens when we do that? Well, let's look at writing off an individual account. So, for example, let's say we deem on March the 4th that Jay Wilson, who has a $2,500 balance, will never be collected. And we write the account off on March the 4th. The original sale was on June the 8th of the previous year. 
But we're okay because remember we're using allowance method. So we expensed not necessarily this client, but we assumed we would have some customers we're not going to collect. So we expensed them in the correct year when the sale was made. So we're okay there. We use the percent of sales method to determine uncollectible account expense. Have we abided by the matching principle? Well, as we just said, yes, because we actually recorded this expense in the prior year. So we're good to go. But now how do we write this person off? Well, remember, we've already recorded the expense, so there's not going to be an expense in this journal entry. What we're going to do is we have now discovered one of our clients or one of our customers that we're never going to collect. So we need to take that out of the allowance account. Remember, the allowance account is a contra asset, so it carries a normal credit balance. To take it out of that account, we would debit the allowance account and we would write off this customer. So accounts receivable carrying a debit balance to write it off, we'd have to credit the account receivable for this particular customer. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and questions and comments are always welcome.